In this video, we'll discuss how you can generate a data dictionary for a CSV file using ChatGPT. Let's dive in. So jumping into jumping into the fleet builder here, uh, we first, first want to start off with uh, getting a CSV file. So you can do that by pulling in from Google Drive, uh, pulling in from maybe Snowflake or something like that. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to we're going to generate a CSV using our ChatGPT blueprint as well. So looking at our ChatGPT blueprints here, uh, you can see we have a we have a blueprint called Create Dummy Data. We're going to use that. Uh, so create sample data the vessel name here so we need our api key so i'm going to copy that uh paste it in uh, we're going to have five rows here uh the columns uh we'll just do id name age city and state there um and then for the file name what we're going to do um example data.csv um, so this is just creating uh some sample data here that then we can send over to chat gpt and they will create a data dictionary for us here again the same process will work with a file from any other service as well, but we're just rolling with the chat GPT version this time. So that's, we have this example data.csv down here. Um, so now we're gonna go back to chat GPT blueprints again. And you can see we have a create data dictionary. Um, you have a create data dictionary blueprint here. We can click that, um, open that up as well. Um, so that's our file name. Oh, sorry, that's our file name there. Uh, we'll call this uh, data dictionary.text. Um, we're going to need our API key again, so I'm going to grab that, paste it in there, uh, and then we'll do create data dictionary for the name here, uh, and then connect those together. Um, so that we have that there. Um, so now for our third option here, so we have this, we're going to have this data dictionary in a text file. It's going to be kind of like a markdown table is how we have it formatted currently. Um, so now we can send this in an email, send it in a Slack message. We can put it up on any of our cloud data buckets. Um, some, some other functionality, if you want to be more technical with it, is you could potentially, you know, insert this into like a DBT uh, YAML file for your for your um, for your column descriptions, things like that. Uh, but we're just going to send this one as an email right right now. So we're going to go email. Um, so we're going to do it two ways. So I'm going to send this message with a file. Um, so I'm going to do use this blueprint. Uh, we have some new functionality that I'm excited to show off here. Uh, send data dictionary. Okay, so I'm going to use my credentials here for email. I fill those in. I'm going to send that to myself uh, with the subject line test. Um, and so here's this new functionality that we have. So now inside of Shipyard, you can embed text inside, like you can embed a text file inside of a message inside of email and Slack here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is here is your data dictionary. Um, do some new lines here. Um, and that file name is data dictionary.txt. So the way you do that, the way you embed, um, the way you embed is you're going to do double, double, double squiggly brackets there. Uh, this is a text file. So we're going to do text with a colon and put the file name in there into our curly brackets. So that's going to read, here's your data dictionary and then give that data dictionary there for the user. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of a new feature there for us at Shipyard, but, uh, definitely going to be helpful, uh, to be able to embed messages in the email and Slack, uh, blueprints that we have. Um, but I'll also attach it as well so we can look at it as, as it's on the dependent file. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and name this. Uh, so email data dictionary. We'll put as the fleet name. And then we'll click save and finish here. So this is gonna take us to a screen telling us that the fleet has been created successfully, as we can see here. Um, and then we can click run your fleet. Uh, so when I click run your fleet, you're gonna see that it's successfully scheduled it to run immediately. Um, inside of Shipyard, we call this an on-demand run. Um, so anytime that you're working with a fleet, no matter what tab you're in, whether it's logs, the fleet builder, triggers, or version control, um, you're going to see this uh, green run now button on the top right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that's going to be visible across any of those fleet tabs, um, and you can click that button. It's going to kick off a run with the most recent version that was created. Um, and so each, each version is going to be whenever you click that save button on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Um, so while we're waiting for this to kick off, we can look at triggers up here. Um, so... We can't, you can always do an on-demand run of your fleet, but of course, if you want to put something in production, you don't want to have to wake up and click that button every morning or else the whole process isn't run. Um, so with that in mind, we do have scheduling triggers you can see here. Um, so we can schedule based on hour, day, weekly, and monthly. You know, you can have as many of those as you want or as few as you want um, there. Um, then also we have webhook parameters as well. Um, so you can, you, or webhooks, I'm sorry. So you can actually, you can actually programmatically kick off these fleet runs using webhooks. And I've got a little ahead of myself there, but we, you can you can also send parameters to those webhooks as well. Um, so something that could work with this fleet uh, in particular is that first um, that first vessel that we provide, or we or that, that second vessel, I'm sorry, we provided the CSV. 
Um, you could change that to be a variable so that you could potentially, you know, if you wanted to, you know, keep running the same fleet without creating a different one for each file, you can make that a variable and then you could send in that file name with your webhook uh, to let it create a data dictionary for every single CSV that you want it to. Uh, that could be really, really helpful if you have, um, you know, some tables inside of DBT or if you have a lot of files uh, unless you want to create descriptions for columns. That's going to be a perfect way to do that there. Um, so let me take off that webhook and then resave it here and then we'll jump back to the logs um, and take a look and see what's going on with the run so far. So we can see looking at our fleet log page here that our first vessel that's creating the sample data is already completed. Um, so if we want to look at that, we can see that um, all the environment variables that were set based on our inputs. So the API key, which is protected as a secret, as well as the number of rows, the columns that we want in that sample data, and then the file name that we put it in, so that CSV. And then you can also see the actual sample data that was generated down there. So that's being printed off by default uh, with our, our library blueprint. So the age, name, age, city, and state there uh, that's listed. Um, and then you can see that after that first one finished, the second one uh, started, uh, the second vessel started running, which was creating that data, that data dictionary. Um, so now that data dictionary is done and stored in that text file. Uh, so ChatGPT has taken that CSV in uh, and has generated a description for each one of those columns, so that ID, name, age, uh, city, and state. Um, so it's created it's created a data dictionary for that. Um, and so now we're in the into that third vessel, which is going to be sending an email. Uh, with that text file both embedded into the into the text and uh and, and 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 attached as a file so let's open up an email here um we'll see that that's here um so you can see we have you know here is your data dictionary um and then here's our data dictionary coming down here um and so you can see we have our id which is a unique identifier with the data type um so you can see that's that's what chat gpt generated and uh, then we can also open that up in the text file and you can see there is the actual uh, data dictionary that was provided in, in our text file now as well. So in this video, we discussed how we can use ChatGPT inside a shipyard to create a data dictionary based on a CSV. And then we and then we and then we emailed that to ourselves. If you have any questions about this solution or how you can use shipyard in your organization, use the link in the description to set up a time to chat with our team of data experts. If you want to see more tutorials like this one, check out these related videos.